Hello, and in this video we're going to talk about domain arrange. Uh, we're going to define the domain arrange, and then we're going to write the domain arrange in inequalities, interval notation, and set builder notation. We're going to look at the graphs of either any kind of function or toolkit functions and determine the domain arrange of those types of graphs. And then we're going to also define functions piecewise and look at how the domain arrange works there. So that's what we're going to do for this video. We're going to start off with the definitions. Uh, definition domain is all input values. That's what goes into the function or into the relation. It's the independent variable. It's called independent because it does. it's the ones you put in and they can change with whatever you want to put in there. The range is all the values that come out of the rule or function. Those are called dependent variables because they depend on what you put in. All right, so here we're going to look at some functions and we're going to write inequalities, interval notation, set builder notation for each of these examples. So we're going to look at the domain range specifically on each problem here. In this first example, we have a fixed values and it's a chart. So our domain here is going to be a fixed set of values. It's negative 3, negative 1, 0, and 1. We don't write that in interval notation or set builder. This is the set we would use. We don't have any qualities here because it's just a set of values. The range values from this set is 2, negative 5, 3, and 2 again, so we don't write it twice. So those are our range values. Now this is we just write as a set because it is these are um, specific values that don't change. Um, they're not it's not continuous. It's just points that you would graph on the graph. Okay, so let's look at this second example. We have a function written as two square root of three minus x. So our um, domain on this one would be um, the values where this has to be greater than 0 because we can't take the square root of negative numbers. So that means 3 minus x has to be greater than or equal to 0 in order for this to have a square root and then we can do that. So we would then take this and we'd solve. I would add this x to the other side. We'd add x to both sides here to solve this. I would add x here and x to the other side. We get 3 is greater than or equal to x, which is the same as saying x is less than or equal to 3. So that's going to be an inequality. That's our inequality notation. inequality right here x is less than or equal to 3 now interval notation means that we're going to be using uh, the notation that's either going to be brackets or parentheses and a bracket is equal to so if we see this bracket or or this bracket that's going to be um, an equal to it's going to be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to if we see this or this, we're going to use one of these two. Oh, we're going to use either so this one over here is going to be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. This one's here going to be greater than or less than. If we see those brackets. Okay, so this says less than or equal to three. So that means it's going to start at three and get smaller. So in in, in the interval notation, we always write the smallest number on the left, which in this case we don't know the smallest number, so we would write negative infinity there as the smallest number to the left of this. And then we'd go all the way up to 3 and stop. So this is interval notation for this same problem. So we have inequality, we have interval. And then we have set builder. Now the set builder uses the inequality notation but writes it as a set. So set 
builder starts off with a set of all X's such that, so we have all X's such that, that's that bar. And then we're going to write it this way here. We're going to use the inequality rule uh, so that they're all um, less than or equal to 3. So this is set builder. So set builder and inequality look very similar. And that's the domain of this function. And they're going to ask you for the domain. Now, if we were going to be doing the range of that function, we'd have to actually look at what this, we'd have to plot that point at 3 and figure where it out where it is because this is a square root right so a square root is one of your um, toolkit functions so this square root is actually going to go upward because it's positive positive 2 so if we can figure out where 3 is on the graph if we plug 3 in there we get 0 times 2 which is 0 so the point 3 0 is the value where we would start graphing and since it is a square root square roots look like this they go to the right or to the left in this case and this one's going up because it's positive so it's either going to do this or it's going to go like this so it's either but it says it's less than three so that means it's going to go to the left so it's not going to look like this one it's going to look like that one it's going up and to the left so that means this point right here is where we would start and we would increase from there so that means the range is greater than zero greater than or equal to zero so the range on this problem is um, f of x is greater than or equal to zero we could also write that as um, interval notation so zero is the smallest one and we're going to go greater than up to infinity so that's the range in interval notation and set builder notation for this would be um, the set of all f of x's such that f of x is greater than or equal to zero and you could use y here instead of f of x if you want to use one variable all right well let's look at the third type of problem here and this one we're going to look at the domain and range so the domain on this one since it's a fraction we know that the denominator cannot equal zero so we need to figure out where that is where it's not equal to zero so we take two plus three x and we say it's not equal to zero because that's what we're looking for is that place where it's not equal to zero okay so we, we solve this we subtract 2 we then divide by 3 so basically X is not equal to negative 2 thirds so our domain for this is um, right here that's our inequality notation if we were doing interval notation, it's going to be everything but negative two-thirds. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're going to start at negative infinity. We're going to go up to negative two-thirds, but we're not going to include it. And then we're going to start at negative two-thirds and finish out to with all the infinity numbers. So it's going to be everything except negative two-thirds. So we stop at negative two-thirds, we don't include it, and then we start again, pass there. So this is interval notation for that. And the set builder is the set of all x's such that x is not equal to negative two-thirds. So set builder looks very similar to interval notation. Okay, so we have the three types of notation. We have interval. We have uh, set builder. We're going to put it right next to it because it's very similar to interval. Or, uh, and then we have inequalities. And these two are very similar, actually, not interval. Set builder and inequalities are very similarly written. 
Okay, an interval uses the brackets. Okay, so this notation is going to use this, uh, this, this, and this. Set boundary notation uses the bracket x such that or y such that. And then the inequalities are going to be greater than or equal to, less than or equal to x, um, x, less than, greater than, or in between, right? We can do in between here as well. So if we have x is between two values, we write it that way, a and b. And that's including, and this is not including, a and b. So it's everything in between A and B, but not including A and B. This one's including A and B. So these, all of these notations go into these brackets. And this interval notation, um, sometimes if we use infinities, then if we use negative infinity to start with, it goes that way, open bracket. If we use positive infinity, it will go that way, open bracket. Okay, so then we can go up to a value of A maybe each way, or we could start at A and go up end at A and no one include. So the brackets depend on what we're looking at. Are we looking at a denominator? Are we looking at a, a um, square root where it has to be greater than? Um, are we looking at all a uh, function itself that has a starting and ending point? That's an interval notation here. Okay, so that is the inequality interval and set builder notation. So let's use that on the some of the future problems here, which is domain and range from graphs. So what we're doing here is we're looking at width and height. The domain is the width, the range is the height. So if we have a graph, let's say we have a graph of an x and a y, and we have some graph, okay, that looks like Say our graph looks like this, and it stops right here, and starts starts right there as we go left to right. So the values we're going to need for the graph for the domain range are the values that are listed on the y-axis here and here, because that's the height of the graph. It goes from this point up to that point. That's our f of x or y. So this is going to determine your range. Um, this point here and this point here, our starting value and the ending value, that's going to depend on our x's. That's going to be the domain part of the graph. This is going to be the range part of the graph. Okay, so let's say this point was um, 4 and we have negative 3 here. And uh, let's say this is five over here and negative four here. Then we know on this graph, since it's um, not have any breaks in it, it doesn't have any breaks from start to finish here, our domain is going to be the x's such that x is between, um, it's going to equal negative four because it's closed circle, but it's not going to equal 5, but it goes up to 5, so it's not equal to here because it has a circle there. Okay, so this is our domain and set builder notation. If we wanted interval notation, we just say this. The same thing, we just take this part out of set builder. And if we want um, interval notation, we know it's including four, negative four, so it starts at negative four and goes up to five and doesn't include it. So this is interval notation. So these are the three things from the domain. Now the range, same thing happens on the range, but we go and we use the values here. So the range is, let's say it's y this time. So y is going to be between, um, y such that y is in between so it's going to include negative 3 
because it's dotted here at negative 3, and but it's not dotted at 4, so it's going to stop at 4, and I wrote that incorrectly. It is not including, not including 4. Okay, so that's what we have here. So again, our set builder interval will be shorter, but this is this is inequality notation, and then interval notation, we have a bracket negative 3, and a parentheses around 4, because it doesn't include it. Interval, inequality, set builder. Okay, we look at the width and the height of the graph. Okay, that's how we determine what the domain and range is. Okay. Now, toolkit functions. Constant. So a constant function is a flat line fl function like this. It's just some function that's flat line. It's a horizontal line, so that's going to be the domain. Let's see the domain of these. We're going to list them in the range of your toolkit functions. Domain here is everything because the graph goes left to right forever. It doesn't stop, so negative infinity to positive infinity is the domain. And the range is going to equal whatever the constant is. So the range is y equals the constant. Whatever the constant is, that's the range. So whatever horizontal line you have here, if it's 3, then it's going to be y equals 3. If it's negative 2, it's y equals negative 2. Now the identity function, if we look at the graph of that, it looks like this at 45 degrees through the x and the y. So that means the domain and range of that, it goes left and right forever, so it's negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range, it goes up and down forever, so it's the same, negative infinity to positive infinity. Absolute value. Now the absolute value graph looks like this. Okay, so if we look at that, it goes right and left forever. So it goes right and left forever, so that's going to be negative infinity, positive infinity. But it doesn't go up and down forever. It goes up from zero, but it doesn't go down from zero. So the range is going to be starting at zero and going up. All right, quadratic is the same as the absolute value because the graph looks very similar. The graph is a U, but it does the same thing as the absolute value. It goes up, so that means its domain and range are exactly the same as the absolute value function. All right, cubic. A cubic graph function, that means that it's to the third power. The third power graph looks like this. All right, that's going to be up and down, or right and left forever, up and down forever. So it goes right and left forever, it goes up and down forever. Square root has a graph that looks like this, starts at this point, goes to the right. Okay, so that means it's going to be 0 to infinity, because it goes to the right, starting at 0 goes to the right. It also starts at zero and goes up, so the domain and range are exactly the same on the square root function. Cube root. Cube root was on the last assignment. Cube root looks like this. It's a little narrower than the square root. It goes like that. Um, the domain there is going to be going right and left forever, so that's going to be negative infinity positive infinity, and the range is also going up and down forever, so it's going to be negative infinity, positive infinity. Okay, reciprocal function, that's 1 over x, 1 over x. So the reciprocal function looks like uh, 1 over x looks like this. It has an angle on it there, and it looks like this. Okay. So the reciprocal function is going to include everything but 0, 
you can't it goes left and right except for zero and it goes up and down for except for zero so it's going to be a combination negative infinity to zero and then zero to infinity and that's for both the domain and the range both of them are the same and the last one here is the reciprocal squared that's 1 over x squared. Now 1 over x squared looks like this. Okay, it goes right and left forever except for 0. So it doesn't have a 0 also, so its domain is the same. But the range is not the same because it starts at 0 and goes this is the domain. The range is goes it starts at zero and goes up. It doesn't have the lower part on this one. Now we're going to look at the last piece of domain and range here. That's the piecewise. That's our last thing on this list. Piecewise functions are where we have to graph three or four multiple pieces, two or three pieces. And they're defined in parts with the domain of each part next to it. Okay, now one of your toolkit functions has to be defined that way. So the absolute value of x is actually a piecewise function. So if we look at the absolute value of x, and we look at the graph of the absolute value of x, we can see that it has to be a piecewise function. So basically it's going to be two pieces. All right say the first piece is x if it's greater than or equal to 0. So it's this piece right here. It just starts here and goes like that. So that's the this piece right here in red. So it's this x value, but it starts at 0 and goes up. It doesn't go into the negative region. Okay, the second piece, which says it's negative x, all right, it's negative x. It's going to come from the top down. Okay, so it's going to go right here. And do this. So that's the blue section. That's this graph. So negative x comes down from this piece and stops right there. But it stops at 0. So uh, the red one includes this dot, but the blue one does not because it's not equal to there. So it includes everything. So this function, absolute value, is actually a piecewise function because it's two different pieces of two different graphs. It's not one single graph, it's two different pieces. Okay, so let's look at another example of a piecewise graph. All right, so I'm gonna wanna evaluate some things. So I'm gonna look at these numbers in part of your domain over here and evaluate in which piece it is. So the first one asked me to evaluate f of 5. So f of 5, I go up here and it's not greater, I'm sorry, f of negative 5. It's not greater than negative 1, so we don't use that piece. It's not between negative 2 and 1, so we don't use that piece. It's not less, is it less than negative 2? It is less than negative 2. So that means this function uses this piece right here because it's less than negative 2. So the answer to that is negative 1. It's this answer right here. Second one here, we're going to use uh, negative 2 here. So we have to look at where negative 2 is. It's actually in this one right here. So we're going to put negative 2 right here. So this one's going to be negative 2 plus 1, which is going to be negative 1 as a solution. All right, this one we're going to look and see where 1 is. It doesn't fit in this one because it doesn't include it, so it goes here. So we would put this value into this function part. So this would be 1 cubed. So that's going to be 1. And then 3 also goes in this piece of the function, so that's going to be 3 cubed, which is 27. All right, now we're going to graph this next. So the graph is also in pieces. So we're going to look at the graph in terms of the three pieces. Okay, so we're going to put our x and y here. And we're going to graph in three pieces. Okay, so in the first piece, 
we're going to do negative 1. So anything that's less than negative 2. So if I go out here, and I say there's negative 2. Anything past there, oh, we're doing the lines here. So anything past here, past negative 2, is going to be, the first is going to be negative 1. So it's going to be down at negative 1. If it's past this point, going this way. So it doesn't include that, but it's going to go this way. It's a constant function at negative 1 right here. Okay. Now, from this point, it's a line with the intercept. So the intercept of this line, this next piece is x plus 1. So it has an intercept at 1. So it's going to cross at 1 here. So this is x plus 1. It's going to start when we put in negative 2. So if we put negative 2 in there, we already did that. We got negative 1. So it's going to start at negative 1. So it's going to fill this hole in. So this graph is going to fill this hole in. At negative 2, it's negative 1. And it's going to go through this point, like this. And it's going to go all the way to the positive 1 here on this side, and stop. But it doesn't include that. So if we put positive 1 in here, we'd get 2. So it would go to 2 up here. This would be 2 here. But it wouldn't include 2 because it's not part of that graph. It's not included. Now the next part starts at, we put 1 in there, we'd get 1. So this is the third part. We're graphing x cubed. We're going to start that at 1. So if we put 1 in here, we already did that. We get 1. So at 1, 1 is our first graph here. So we're going to graph this one at 1, 1. It's going to include that dot. All right, and then we need to, to graph a couple other points for this. So it's going to be greater than or equal to 1. So if I put 2 in there, I'm going to get 2 cubed is 8. So it's going to go up very quickly and curve very quickly up here and 2 is going to be up here at negative 8. 2, 8, I mean positive 8. So it's going to go up and it's going to look like the, that part of the cubic graph that you had here. If you graph the whole cubic it would go down and through. Okay, but we're only graphing pieces. Alright, now the last thing we're going to do here is write an equation for each piece. Okay, so I'm going to graph a function, and I'm going, or I have a graph of a function, and I'm going to graph or write each piece. Now, it looks like to me there's either three or four pieces. This looks like an absolute value function. So we could use absolute value, or we can say there's three. I'm going to actually just say there's three or four pieces here. We're going to start on the left side and work my way up. So this is a constant at negative two. So my first function is going to be negative 2. This is a line of negative x. That's going to be my next piece. This is a line with positive x. That's my next piece. The last piece here is 1, 2, 3, 4. It's the constant 4. So we have these are our pieces are of our functions. We now have to write the domain here. So so this one's going to happen when it's less than two, less than negative two. X is less than or equal to negative two, actually, because it includes a dot. This piece goes from negative two to positive or to zero. Okay, so we're going to say if um, X is between doesn't include two or negative two. Sorry, it doesn't include negative two. But we can either make it include or we don't have to make it include. Let's say we don't include it at 0. And then we're going to have to include it at 0 here because we have a dot there. So if we don't include 0 here, we can include it here. Or we can not. We can include it there and not include it there. We can't have it in both places. Okay, this is x and it's going to go 1, 2, 3 to 3 here. So between 0 and 3. And we're going to include 3 because it has a dot there. Okay, and then this one's going to say if 
x is greater than 3, we're going to go be this line here. So anything past 3, it's going to go and just have a constant 4. So there's a constant at the beginning and the end, and then there's two line segments at in between that. So this is our function, piecewise function. Now this could be also correct if this was equal to and this was not equal to. We can interchange that. Other than that, it's, that would be the correct answer.